So take two. The uh, session is going to be short. I want any questions about midterm that you have. I want it to be asked and gone, and then uh, we'll start the session. Yes. Pardon me? No. No. Uh, midterm is going to be, as we mentioned, so, so just one more time to, to see what is on midterm. It's going to be, these are going to be week one, two, three, four, and five. So logic, we stop at the end of logic. Okay? Um, uh, and uh, uh, let's take a look at, uh, where is it? Uh, let's take a look at the notes. So notes, I want to see, see exactly the same. See, you see over here, and this is arrays and C string, so we stop. So one, two, three, four, five. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually go through my notes, see what I have in there. I'm going to build up questions out of that one. That's how, how it works, okay? And quest, you're going to have sh short programming questions. I'm not going to give you, ask you to write long programs, probably small functions to write. So small little functions, and you're going to have concept questions. It's going to be multiple choice and things like that. So multiple choice, short questions, and uh, uh, that's it. And, and small walkthroughs, and I'll tell you exactly what a walkthrough is. I'll explain it to you in a second. Okay? So when I say a walkthrough, this is what happens. And this one, uh, because I do not have... Uh, a board beside me. Um, let me see if I can do this. Explaining what walkthroughs are. So when we are actually giving you a walkthrough, what do I mean? Like what, what does it mean to create a walkthrough? So say I have a program. Let me just write a program over here quickly in main in here. So I will have, I'm going to use the touchpad. So I will have something like this. So so main. So I'm going to write something like this. Say integer a, uh, character, uh, integer a, and I'm going to have character ch uh, set a. And in here, I'm going to say 4, i set to 0, i less than, say, 3, and i plus plus. <clears throat> and I'm going to say put char ch plus plus. Oh, why did I say I? So this is I. Okay. And in here, I'm going to say printf percent D I. So let's say this is a walkthrough. Okay, or let's make it even more interesting. So in here, I'm going to say uh, foo character ch. Let's do it like this. So I'm going to take this over there. That looks good integer i, so I'll put the i over there, and I'm going to say cha over here, and I'm going to say foo ch, and I'm going to say printf uh, percent th dash uh, 3 c, and I'm going to put over here a CH, and I'll go to no line. Okay, so let me just make sure everything is good. That's not full, it's full. 
So let me see. All right. So if I want to walk through this code, how do I do it? Oh, it's going to be tough for me because the code is at the top over there. I'll try to look at here to, to see it, and I'll, and I'll do it from here. So let me, this is an awkward classroom, you know, like the thing is up there. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So, and this moved. All right. So when you are walking through a code, how you do it? First of all, you see what kind of functions do you have. You create tables for your functions. So I want to walk through this and see how it works. And let's uh, put over here a star, something like that. I just want to uh, see what happens. Okay. So first you create a table. So I have a, I have a function called foo. So this is my foo function, OK? And I have a function called main. So this is my main function. Is it visible up there in the, on the screen, the writings? OK, good. So <clears throat> then what do I do? Uh, I'm going to start executing the code and, and follow exactly what it does. And in here, I'm going to create my output. So this is my output. OK? So I'll start with main. I'm going to have CHA over there, right? So in here, I'm going to create, put CH, OK? CH. And the value A will go in there. That's in main. I have CH that is A, right? Then the function foo is called in here. So a function foo is called. I'm going to come to function foo. Foo has a CH of its own, correct? So ch of a is passed to foo. So this will be a. Are we OK with this? Now, what else I have in foo? I have an i, correct? <clears throat> so that's going to be i. I'm going to put it over here. And what is the initial value of i? I do this, usually, a question mark. I know that doesn't look like a question mark. It's a question mark to me. It means it's garbage. Question mark is garbage. OK, you can put G, you can put whatever you want. So when something is not set, you put garbage. So if I had a printf at between lines 3 and 4, you should have written garbage. Garbage gets printed in here. Or unknown value will be printed here, because it's a value that you don't see, right? OK? So that's that one. So I don't have, you want me to put a printf over there and demonstrate? It doesn't matter. Well, what, that's what I mean. So garbage will be printed over there, which I'm not going to do. Then it says i set to 0, so i becomes 0. All right? i less than 10, i less than 3. Is i less than 3 tr true? Yes, 0 is less than 3, correct? So it comes in. Put character ch. Plus plus happens after. What is the value of CH? A. A is printed. And usually do like this, it means this is the line. A is printed. Then after printing, it's added by 1. I know that CH is a character. Character is an integer. ASCII code will be added by 1. Therefore, now CH is what? Capital B. Right? Now, end of for loop, i will be added by 1. i is 1, correct? i becomes 1. Condition happens. Is 1 less than 3? Yes, it comes in. Prints the ch, which is b, then adds by 1, becomes c, correct? End of for loop, i will be added by 1. i is what? 2, correct? Is 2 less than 3? Yes. It comes in, 
print CH, which is C, then it's added by one that is D, correct? Correct? What is that? What was that? Did I make a mistake? I may make a mistake. <clears throat> yes, zero was A, one was B, and two is C. And then two will be added by one, becomes three, correct? It comes three, and now it exits the thing because three is not less than three, correct? It comes over there, says printf new line. As soon as it says new line, you, you do a new line because a new line is printed. Then percent %d is printed, which is i, which is 3. 3 is printed. Then it prints new line, new line, and an asterisk, correct? Now function foo ends. It goes back to where? Main. Now, I could have returned something from foo. Okay, you want me to do that? You want me to change it so it returns something so we see what happens? Okay, so let's do that. So in here, I'm going to say, return i plus plus. Add a twist to it, okay, just to play with your brains, okay? And in here, I'm going to have integer ret and in here, I'm going to say this is ret and in here, I'm going to say percent zero five D and I'm gonna put over here ret and ch must return an integer so I'm gonna say int <clears throat> are we okay with this now so where are we right now we printed the asterisk and it's time to return I++, plus plus, correct? So first, now it wants to return the value. So first, it wants to return the value. So the value 3, it says return I++, plus plus, correct? So 3 will be returned to where? Main. Do we see the main over there? Yes. 3 is returned to main, correct? And then 3 is added by 1, 4, correct? Are we okay down to this point? Now the value of 3 is passed to main. We, in main, we had a ret that I did not write. I'm going to add it over here. And ret was garbage at the, at initially. So it returns to main, foo returns 3 into ret, correct? Are we correct? All right. Now, now we are in uh, line 13 of main, and our ET is 3. Then it says printf in three spaces left justified. Three spaces. You do this. One, two, three. 3, left justified, which means C is going to, the content of CH is going to get printed over there. CH is A, A is going to get printed over here. Correct? It's left justified in three spaces. Or you can put dashes like that if you don't like it. You can put like this, because now we are in line 15. I'm saying in three spaces, 1, 2, 3. Left justify and print the value of C, of CH, and CH has the value A, correct? <clears throat> you put the A over here, and that's that. Then we say in five spaces, so one, two, 
three, four, five. Put the value of ret and fill the left with zero. So I have one, two, three, four, and what is ret? Three. Then what you do? You go to new line. Then you turn off your phone. Okay? Are we okay with this? The walkthrough is over. Now, what is the what is the true success in doing a walkthrough? I'm not going to give you a walkthrough like this in a test. In a test, I'm going to give you walkthroughs that only creates one line. Okay? So instead of giving a walkthrough like this, I'll give you three walkthroughs. One is just one printf, the other one is just one return statement. So if I have three lines, so line number one will be one walkthrough, one number two will be one walkthrough, line number three will be one walkthrough. And the walkthroughs have an exact match output. So you only write one thing, and you write uh, exactly what the output is, and that the uh, system is going to tell you if it's, if it's correct or not. I'm not going to give you multiple lines. Yes. Line six, line, I have to see from here, that angle I can't see. In line seven, after new line, an asterisk is printed, correct? Pardon me? Oh, I have, why I have, oh, why I have two parentheses? See, I, so I should have had this one in here. That parenthesis over here is my typo, but the output is wrong, that's not supposed, so why did I have two things over there? Um, that, those two are typo. They're not supposed to be. That's the one. Did I do that? When did I do that? Anyway, so that's the one. That's, is that as I answered the question? A? A is in main. Line 15, after foo. Yes. It's just my stupidity. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, like doing something like that, it's just, I'm just checking you to see if you can debug. So I'm not going to give you something that works perfectly. What is the point of a walkthrough? To see if you can find a bug. So if a person wanted to add one, they should have returned plus plus i, not i plus plus. So one version will get i plus plus, the other version will get plus plus i. So one version will return three, the other version will return four. And the plus CH plus plus, one version gets plus plus CH, the other version gets C, CH plus plus. So they have to add before or they have to add after. These are all the things that you did need to do the walkthrough. And these are what you do when you're checking to see if your code is working or not, right? Yes. Yes. The last one is empty. Okay, uh, one thing that I have to, that I wanted to continue, um, we're going to do the walkthrough again from scratch. We're going to do it again, okay? But one thing I wanted to do, when you do a walkthrough, you turn off your intelligence. You have to be dumb as a doorknob. If you use your intelligence and your expectation, you'll screw it up. Because you want the output to be something and you'll do it. You have to turn off the intelligence, therefore you become computer. Computer has no intelligence. It just follows instructions. Blindly follow the instructions and see what the outcome is. I may made a mistake. I don't know. I'm going to do it again. Okay? We're going to do it again. Is that okay? All right. But this time I'm going to make a change. Uh, I just So this was the first version. Let's do plus plus CH now in here. All right. And also, I'm going to make it two so it's shorter. Uh, the rest should remain, or you want me to change? Is it OK? Uh, you want me to do, make this plus plus here? Or let me make it I plus plus so it's tricky still, OK? So you want to do the walkthrough with me? Come here. So you got to tell me I'm going to do it.
actually, it was a mistake to come here because you cannot see the lines. You see what I'm, what I'm <laughs> you have to go down. <laughs> Watch it. Good. I would write there, right there, right there. That's good. Okay, so get close and you tell me and because because you come over here, you'll see how I suffer like, like that. You cannot see it. Okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, so where do we start? What do we? Oh, wait, 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 wait. First of all, we draw the tables. Okay, so we draw the tables for each function. I have a table. I write the name of the table, name of the function. That is my way. If you have a better way, invent your own. This is how I do it. Some people put the variables over here and they go like that. Some people go from top. Do it any way you like. Okay. So now. Uh, let's start. CH is A in which function? Why did you go to? Turn off your intelligence. Where does a computer begin execution of the program? Thank you. So start from main, not foo. Okay. In main, CH is A. And everybody else? Analyze him, make sure that he's right. Okay, next one. Red is garbage. In foo ch, why is it a? Fantastic. I is garbage. Then I is zero. No, no, no. Thank you. You check if zero is less than two. So you have to say that. You have to. You have to be the computer. So before you go to the next one, again, don't use your intelligence. Dumb as a doorknob. Seriously. If you use your intelligence, you're screwed up. So the first thing is go. Zero is, which is what? Thank you. So what happens first here? So first, CH is added by 1 because it's P. Thank you. So first, CH becomes B. Then what happens? Thank you. So B is printed. The first printout comes over here. Next. Thank you. Perfect. All right. All right. I is 2. OK. 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 Goes to new line. Prints 2. It goes to new line. Then prints asterisk. Why did you go main? You're a 9. You're still in foo. Re so you return 2. And I becomes three. Okay. Ret is two. Three spaces. So I print A at first. Five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. What do you print in it? What is red? Two. And what, do you fill it with anything at left? And then? You just lost the mark. Thank you. So this is a new line, yeah. And then? Program finishes. Done. OK? <laughs> Thank you. Good? Are we good? So that's what it is. So, so again, remember, you're walking through something, turn intelligence to off, just follow the instructions blindly, and do every single thing that you see. Thank you very much, sir. You may go back to your seat. <laughs> I like the applause. <laughs> I don't know if it's me or him. But anyways, I'll take it. All right, so that's how walkthroughs are. So if I give you a walkthrough, have a piece of paper and do it. So bring a piece of paper with you.
for the test to be able to jot stuff on it. Yes. And you are got to give all those to me. Remember, you're bringing a reference sheet that you're going to give it back to me, a piece of paper to write anything you have over there, your name is going to be on it. Yes. Your choice. Go home, play with, take some of the examples that I have, just play with it, see how it works. Okay? Again, this, this, is, this always works for me. All right? Yes. Explain it again. So what happens is that you start from main, and you put the name of the variables at, the t at each table. Now each table has, and when, if foo was called again, if I had another foo being called again, you draw another line. It means that's the second call. And then you start again fresh. Remember that. So this is the first call. When it's ended, it's like this, and you do like that. It means foo is returning. OK? So you write your tables. Uh, you have main. In main, I have ch and ret. In foo, I have ch and i. As you see, the two chs are completely different things. It starts from main. Main ch becomes a. Ret is garbage. Foo is called passing a to it. Therefore, foo will have a over here, and i will be garbage. i will be set to 0. Check to see if it's less than two or not, it is, it adds one to ch becomes b, prints it. Then, adds one to a becomes one, it goes up, it's still less than two, comes back down, adds one to ch becomes c, prints it. Adds one to i becomes two, goes up there, because it's two and it's false, it breaks and comes out to line seven. Line seven, the very first thing is a new line, therefore it goes to new line. And then after going to new line, it's going to print the value of i that what is actually broke the loop, which is obviously two. So it prints two over there and goes to new line and prints an asterisk. Then it returns i, which is two. So two gets stacked for returning and i will be added by one because plus plus is happening after the returning. So that two comes back to line 13, sets the ret in main to two, and then printf starts. In three spaces left justified, ch will be printed, that is a, so three spaces left justified a. Then I put this one over here just to know this is the next five, because when you are doing it, you don't see how many you have. So that's that, so it becomes, and then in here in five spaces, you print the value of ret that is two with three zeros, with four zeros at the end because it's filled with zero. And we are done. And it goes to new line. And we are done. Yes? No question? No? We're good? Oh, so, so, is that good? So if that's the case, ret becomes 2 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, therefore it becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, correct? So <laughs> this ret becomes... One, two, three, four, five, eight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, four. I forgot the four. One, three, four, five, eight. And now it says print that six digit in five spaces. Therefore, all the spaces are completely ignored, and your output will be one, two, three, four, five. Eight, and then it goes to the line. So if the width is greater than the thing, it ignores it. If you wanted to check to see what happens if it was double, double ret, something like that. Okay, so. <clears throat> 
Now in here, I'm going to have percent. What do you want the format specified? Format specified to be so that's zero. I'm going to uh, oh, damn that. Okay, so say. Um, mm, uh, what do I put over here? I'm going to put, um, say, 9.2. Okay? Is that good enough? Huh? Oh, oh LF, LF, yeah, you're right. LF. So if that's the case, the last line over here where ret is being returned, the ret will be, that's why some people like to put it over here because you can put long stuff, okay? So that ret actually becomes bigger than that because it's a double. So uh, the ret is returning uh, the number two. Two will be added to 12. That becomes 14.345678, correct? That's the one, right? Then it comes down and it says, comes back to printf, so dash 3 is printed, that's fine. Now it says in nine spaces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, two spaces after the decimal point, 1, 2, so this will be decimal point. It's going to print the 14. 14 is going to come over here. 0 is going to be filled at left. At right side, I have 3, 4. Okay? Now, if, if, this was, if this was 5, 6, then this will be 5, 7, because it rounds it up. Yeah. So, again, I'm going to put that thing over there. Keep writing different things and see what happens. Okay? So that's it. So that's your walkthrough. Are we good? All right. <clears throat> Search and replace. That's what we are going to talk about now. So, So I'm going to call this walk, walk.cpp. So 0, 1, well, so it's not C, sorry. Or A dash, let's see. Oh, OK, there we go. So um, search and replace. What is search and replace good for? You can ask the compiler to search for a certain type of string and replace it with something else, a sub search and replace some kind of a token, and replace it with something else before compilation. What is it good for? If you want to have certain values that you like to get replaced that is a standard thing and you want to change, you can do that. Like, for example, let's say in here, in this program, instead of printing this, I wanted to print... Pi. So every single time, if I want to actually print pi, that's a long number, OK? I don't want to do that. So how do I do it? You can actually take this over here, go at the top, and say, define pi to this value. And remember, anything that has hashtag beside it, it's not C language. It's compiler language. You are not writing C code. You are telling to compiler what to do before compilation. So compiler does the compilation after all those hashtags are done. The first one is include. You know what is include? Copy and paste. You are literally, and I'm not trying to come up with any metaphor here, you are literally telling to the compiler, Go to the standard library 
directory for include files, copy the contents of standard input output.h, and paste it at line one. Literally, literally does that. And then continues, and the next one it says, define pi to that. It means search throughout the application. Any place you see pi, replace it with that value. So if I write over here pi, it's going to actually do that. So it just searches. It, there, it's not a variable. Please appreciate that. So when your program compiles, there is no pi. It's only 3.14, whatever it is. Yes? Usually, usually, it's all capital. Usually, it's all capital. Okay? Usually, it is all capital. All right? And just, uh, let me just uh, run this program. So that's the program that is running, right? So we have the program running. Now, I just want to demonstrate include to you to see what include is. When I say literally, I'm not joking. Take a look at this. I'm going to add over here a new item, and I'm going to call it hoo dot he he. Okay? I'm going to add that. All right? Then I'm going to add, actually, I'm not going to add it. It's, I'm just going to put it in resources. You, you, don't need to, you don't need to even add it. I'm going to put it in resources so it don't get compiled, OK? Then in here, I'm going to add another one, add a new item, booboo.bb or .b, OK? And I'm going to add that one, OK? Put it over here. Now let's open this. Does it open? Yeah. So I'm going to come in the C program of mine. I'm going to copy, say, this. And I put it in boo boo b. Right? Then I'm going to come to this one, and I'm going to get the rest and put it in this one. Okay? Now in my C, I'm going to say include boo boo dot b and include who, who dot he, he, and compile and run. Ta-da. It does nothing. It literally copies and pastes that one over there and copies and pastes this one because the two were a complete program. It ran at compile. You see double quotes over there? It means they are mine. It's not in the standard include library. If you put less than and greater than one, it means go to the standard library header file, search for the file over there. So if boo boo b was in that directory, I could put that one. You follow? So when I say it's literally compiler doing something before it gets compiled, I really mean it. Okay? So do you, everybody understands what happened, right? It's just, I, I just wanted to demonstrate that when I say it's literally a copy and paste, so when compiler wants to start, it says, okay, include this. Yes, I have that one. It gets that piece, the whole thing, and just pastes it where that include is. Then it has another include, goes over there, copies that, and pastes it right over here. And luckily, the outcome is a complete program, and it runs. We got it? OK. Oh. So I'm going to leave it at, as is. I know it's nuts, but I'm going to leave it anyway. OK, and save. Sorry, I just want to put these where they're supposed to be. Oops. 
So I'm going to put it over there in case you see what they are, and I'm going to save it so you see it runs. Okay, so I'll remove that one, go back in here. So we know what, so when I say the final statement literally searches and replace, that's really what I mean. Take a look. So in here I'm going to say C good define. Actually, it's not a good define, somewhat good, eh, kind of good define. <laughs> Now I'm going to show you a bad define. Oh, I lost it. Oh, doesn't matter. OK. So in here, I'm going to say, look at this, include standard input output dot h. OK. Now in here, I'm going to say define sum a plus b. OK. Are we okay with this? Then in here I'm going to say int main void, and in here return 0. And in here I'm going to say integer a is 10, integer b is 20, and I'm going to say uh, integer c, and I'm going to say c is equal to sum. Now I'm going to say printf percent d. And, and, and C. So what's going to happen in here? It's going to replace sum with A plus B, correct? Before compilation. Therefore, C becomes A plus B. Therefore, 30 is going to pr get printed. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? So when I run this, this is what we see, correct? Right? Now take a look at this. What's going to get printed now? Smart. <laughs> so when you look at this, it looks like 60 is going to get printed because you're saying sum multiplied by 2, correct? But remember, it's just a search and replace, which means before the compiler compiles this, sum changes to A plus B. And because multiplication happens before plus, then first 20 is multiplied by 2, which is 40, and then it becomes 50. So you've got to be careful. Defined statement is very tricky. If you want to write crazy stuff like that, make sure you put parentheses around it. As a matter of fact, correct type of writing defined good define is to always enclose what you are defining in parentheses to make sure it happens as a whole. Now if I run it, it is 60. It's not going to be 50. If I remove it, it's going to be 50. So even for that pi that I had in here, where is that kind of good define? That pi is supposed to be like this. That's a proper way of doing it. Guarantees that the, the thing that you have actually means that. Are we okay with this? So always put your thing around. So, so we know what define is, okay? So define statement is just a search and replace. Do we all understand that? So that's what I wanted to talk about. Include is that, define is that. Now, there is another thing that you have to memorize, unfortunately. And this is what you need to do from now on. At any moment of time, if you have a header file, you need to do this in case somebody does this. So in here, say in this util, I have uh, get int, right? So in here, I'm going to say include utils, OK? And in here, I'm going to say C is get int. Oh, OK. So in here, I'm going to say C printf And in here, I'm going to say C is get int. OK. Are we OK with this? Now, 
sometimes, and this will happen. Sometimes, and this will happen. Don't ask me why, I cannot explain it, but this will happen. Without you knowing, a header file gets included twice. Sometimes, utils is included in a header file, and that header file you included here without knowing utils is included, and you include another utils. So what happens is this. By mistake, utils gets included twice. And if that happens when you run it, it's going to complain, and it's not, it's not complaining now, but it will if it's a good compiler. This compiler is not complaining, but if you're putting it on a code, it's going to tell you, hey, you have two definitions of each function because it copies and pastes it twice. We need, our, we need our header files to get compiled only once. There is a magical statement we can write to do that. That magical statement, it's not a magical statement, it's a magical instruction. You do this, what you write over here will be this, and memorize this. If not, define, and we are in school of SDDS, right? So you write SDDS, and then you add the name of the header file in capital, utils, underline H. And then after this, you add define. So this, I have no explanation. It's too above your pay grade at the time. So this becomes an empty header file. You write this around it, OK? You write this around it. I'll explain what it is if you understand it perfect. If you don't, no, no worries. Just remember, when you are writing a header file, write if defined, if not defined, if NDF, you write that. And then you write SDDS underline. You use the name of the header file capitalized. You write it that way. And you repeat it with a define underneath. Then you write all the contents of your header file right in here. What happens is this. This guarantees that no matter, no matter how many times you include your header file, it will be compiled only once. Why? Again, the hashtags are talking to the compiler, right? You are telling to the compiler, hey, compiler, if SDDS utils is not defined, compile the code. So compiler sees. Is it not defined? No, it's not. I'll compile it. The first thing after is to define it, right? You're not defining anything to it. You don't care. You just want it to be defined. So as soon as it gets compiled, that value will be defined. The second time the header file is hit, compiler says, if not defined, oh, it is defined. I'm not going to compile anything. So it's just going to ignore it. So you do not care what it does. You do not, under you do not need to understand it. Remember these things, the format that I gave you. You write that for any header file. So let's say I am creating a point of sale application, and my point of sale application has a header file. The header file of the point of sale application is, for example, POS user interface.h. This is my header file. You see it says pragma once over there? Pragma once is a combination for that. It's for new compilers. That essentially means what I just wrote. But don't trust that. It, it doesn't work on some compilers. That's why I remove it, and I'm going to write my own. So what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to follow that instructions. I'm going to say, if not defined, I'm going to say SDDS underline. The name is POSUI underline H. I hit Enter. I don't trust to repeat it. I copy again and paste it, and I replace the second one with define, and I'm done. Now I have an empty header file to start working it. So remember, any time you create a header file, you add that one to it, blindly. It's like some, I don't know, <laughs> something that you have to follow as, a, as an order. So the syntax, the, the format is, if not defined, if not, if not defined, SDDS, name of header underline H, whatever the name of header is. 
you will cap you all capitalize it. And then you put a define underneath. Are we okay with this? So those are the things that I wanted to say. These are called compilation safeguards. So these are called, so I'm going to write it over here. Uh, what did we put over there? We, how far did we go? A, B, C. So that's D, compilation, D, compile. Oh, I can't do that. Can't escape. So remember that this is compilation because I cannot change the name, then it defies the whole thing. So in here, I'm going to say compilation safeguards. Yes. Yes. I'm just defining, I'm defining something. Because I don't want it to get repeated by mistake. If by mistake two files have the same thing, then when one compiles, the other one won't. I have to make it sure it, I tie it to the name of the file. That's why I create a pattern. And that pattern, you go to different companies, it's different. IBM starts with IBM underline something, maybe, for example. We are in school of SDDS. That's why I'm asking you to write SDDS at the beginning. There is no reason. It's just I'm the boss. I'm telling you that's the pattern. You have to follow it. And these type of rules and regulations for coding change from comp company to company. When you get to a company, they give you a booklet that stick is that this is our way. Okay, as Mandarolian says, that's the way. Okay, are we okay with this? <laughs> no geeks, only me? All right. <laughs> All right. Are we okay? We understand this? Okay, good. <clears throat> so now my utils is safe. I can use my utils for whatever I want. I can include it anywhere I want, and it's beautifully okay. You should have those things too. Okay? I'm going to say D, safeguards. Now, When you are programming, you're pr uh, everything in, a, in computers, when you are, what's the time? We're good. I'm just going to briefly tell you what it is. We'll find out what it is. And it's, uh, uh, we're going to keep it very simple. And uh, we'll continue after that. When you are programming, ladies and gentlemen, every single thing that you read and write from and into is actually a file, believe it or not. The screen that you are printing on is a file. The keyboard that you are reading from is a file. And the syntax for it is this. So when your program starts, standard input output opens a file, two files actually, many files, but two of them are important for us. What is a file? File is like that notebook. To write or read from a file, you should always open it before you do that. It's like your bag. You want to take something out of your bag, you open it first. You take it out, then you close it. You don't leave it open. You see, I keep forgetting to close the thing and I, everything goes out. That's what's going to happen. But there are certain standard files that standard output opens and closes it for you automatically. Okay? These are called STD in an STD out. So you don't know it, but anything you are printing, you're actually printing it on standard output. How? Take a look. Printf is not actually like this. If I want to print this, I should say fprintf, and I should say on standard output. So as you see, the syntax is the same, no difference. It's exactly printf. The only difference is that you say f printf, which means print on a file, and you tell which file. What is that file? Standard output. Where is standard output? Monitor. So it's the same thing, no difference. So if I actually run this, 
It works the exact same way. Nothing has changed, correct? I'm going to go to my get int. I'm going to go to my get int in utils.c. You see it's scanning over here. I'm going to say f scan f. And in here, I'm going to say from standard input. Same thing. It's I am reading from standard input. What is standard input? The keyboard. So if I run it now, it doesn't make any difference. If I run it, it's actually reading from standard input. 234, 234. No difference. So do we understand the syntax? So when you're actually writing printf, it translates it to fprintf on standard output. When you are saying scanf, it translates it to fscanf from standard input. That is the keyboard. Are we OK with this? Now, all we need to do, all we need to do is to learn, all we need to do is to learn how to open and close a file. If we learn how to open and close a file, I can read and write from a file and into a file very easily. OK? First, where is file? File is defined in standard input output as we have over here. And it's actually called file. So in here, the syntax is file. For, so no, for no apparent reason, you put an asterisk in front of it and call it file. So that file that you see over there is something that represents a file in your program. All you need to do is to open it to be able to write into it or read from it. So when you write file asterisk file, it means that file is for you to work with. You want to open it, file open is what you do. So you write over here f file, file o uh, f open. I'm going to call it output.txt. And in here, you're going to write for writing w. It means open output.txt for writing. And you make sure, because if you don't close it, everything's going to go everywhere, you're going to close it at the end. Now you have exactly like a standard output, the exact same thing that you have. So in here, if I write over here the exact same thing, and I write over here file, this is what happens. Error? Seriously? What does it say? Oh, unsafe again. <laughs> All right, that output thingy. Sorry, there's a mouse over here, and I keep getting it. <laughs> this is driving me nuts. Sorry, there's a mouse over here, and I'm going to wipe my mouse is not moving. But that's not mine. Just a second. OK, that's better. Oh, there is another <laughs> 50 mice in here. Anyway, so, so output. So now you know what that define thing you write for app is. You're actually telling to the compiler, hey, I don't want any warnings. That define is one of those things. OK? Now if I run the program, I write over here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I hit Enter. It prints it, right? Well, take a look now. Output.txt. Open it. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in there. Easy. OK? You want to read from a file? It's the same thing. The good thing about reading from a file is that you don't have an idiot at the keyboard making mistakes. When you have a file, you look at the file, you know what the file is, right? It's not going to be a mistake. You know it's going to be an integer and a comma and a name. and a So you know exactly what the pattern is. You don't have some dumb guy sitting over there entering and saying, oh, that's wrong, incorrect thing, incorrect thing. You don't do that. You just read it. And if it fails, you say, file is bad, fix it. <laughs> OK? It's as easy as that. So, so 
We know how to write into a file, right? So let's read from a file and see how, how it works. So in here, I'm going to say write into file. <coughs> so any output you have, just create a file, OK? Open it for writing and write into it. And we only do read and write. We're not going to do any fancy schmancy stuff, OK? Now, <clears throat> how do I read from a file? Let's first create something. So I'm going to create something in here, add a new item. So uh, let's have it comma separated, just for fun. So in here, I'm going to call it, what do we call? Tell me. Uh, um, give me something. Uh, cupcake? <laughs> Cupcakes. Dot com. You got to tell me what to write in here, because cup. Cupcakes? Cupcakes? You know what I'm worried about? What I'm worried about my English is not good. You know, you gotta tell me blueberry muffin thing again. I don't know how to how to how to spell it. <laughs> but we'll try. Anyways, cupcake. Okay, so cupcakes that 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 CSV is what I want to create, okay? Oh, okay. So now <clears throat> say we're gonna have the cupcake and their prices, right? So Chocolate, is that correct? Chocolate or cho or I have an O over here. Sorry, English is fifth language. It's for me, it's difficult. Uh, chocolate chip, okay, and it's uh, two dollars and the thirty-three cents. Uh, blueberry, uh, that is four dollars and fifty-five cents. Okay, so these are the two things I have in here, and I want to read these. Okay, <clears throat> let's save it. And go in here, and I'm going to use my knowledge, whatever I had down to this point, to do this. So, uh, <clears throat> you tell Schmutil, so let that be, it doesn't matter, I'm going to add one over here. So, now I want to have the file to open for reading. So, the file is, what was the name of the file? How did I spell it? Cupcake. 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 So, I'm going to come over here, I'm going to say cupcakes. Dot, dot, CSV, and I'm going to open it for reading. That's W for write, this is for read, right? <clears throat> and I'm closing it at the end exactly as we mentioned. Let's open it up so we see what we are doing in here. So I'm going to have the cupcakes, I'm going to separate it like that. So, whew, so how do I read this? I need a character string, right? So in here, I'm going to say character, name, and let's say it's not more than 80 characters, whatever, right? And I have a double price, correct? Right? So what do I do? If I want to read from a file, what do I do? If it was reading from screen, I had to do a scanf and say read the string up to comma, right? That's what we did. Where is up to? Up to comma. And then pass the comma, right? That's what we did. And then I'm going to read a double, correct? Percent LF. And I'm going to pass, let's put it like this. And I'm going to, remember flush key we had over here? We can have an F flush key, actually. So I'm going to say, I'm going to create two. I'm going to call it F. Actually, f flush is a function. Uh, f flush key is fine. OK. And in here, I'm going to say, f get c. That's getting from a file. And in here, I'm going to say, file pointer file, or file, like that. And in here, I'm going to say file. So in here, I'm going to, so what I'm doing in here, doing the exact same thing. So get care is F get C. They just shorten it. So I'm saying read and up to backslash if I want to flush. In case, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, but I'm just going to write it over there anyway. So anyways, so in here, LF. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to say over here, uh, name and price, correct? So in here, I'm going to say, C out, no, printf, percent s, 
and percent 0.2 LF. And I'm going to print the name and the price. So for now, let's just read one and see what happens. So it starts, program starts. Oh, it's going to read it from string, from screen. So I'm just going to copy this exactly what I had over there. Copy. Okay. So it comes over here and wants to read it from the screen. So I'm going to just paste that and hit enter, correct? And I know the outcome will be exactly that. Correct? Are we okay? We read it from the keyboard, correct? Now that I read it from keyboard, I'm going to say, I don't want to read it from keyboard. I want to read it from the file. Now it's not going to wait for anybody to enter anything. It reads it from the file and just shows it. Easy as that. And you can simply see the return statement of fscanf and stop when it's done. And that's when you get to the end of the file. And you're done. So that's one thing that I read. Now I'm going <clears> to <throat> write it in a loop. So I'm going to say while fscanf is equal to 2, because it's scanf. It's exactly the same thing. Print of the values. You will see that it's going to be a little awkward, but we'll see. Uh, you will see why. So now I have two. Let's make it three. Uh, give me something. Chocolate chip. What is the other one? Uh, uh, muffin? Uh, blueberry? Cranberry? Uh, 399. Okay? So now I have it like that. Let's save it. Now I'll run it. So it's supposed to run. So let's actually run it step by step. So it goes over here. It reads, it reads the first one, prints it out. Reads the second one, prints it out, prints it out, and comes out. Why did it put us an extra space, extra new line over there? Can anybody tell me? Tell me. Why? It is a file. OK? So what really is a file? When you're looking at a file, so it's actually easy to understand. Your file in memory is actually like this. You know that, right? This is what it looks like in memory, correct? So the first one, you are saying read the, <clears throat> you are saying read the name, so it reads the name. Stop at co comma, skip the comma, correct? Read the double. It reads and stops here, correct? Now the next one is reading. What is it going to read? Backslash and blueberry, right? Because you said read everything off to comma. So the backslash and will be picked up exactly like keyboard. So you have to flush it. <laughs> That's why I had that flush thing over there. Or you have to put a backslash and at the end of your scanf. And then you can read single lines for it. Again, this is just an introduction. I'm not going to go through it deeply now, and we're going to go through it the later you're coming in. I'm just giving you an introduction to it, so don't worry about it. But anyways, now, <clears throat> if I bring it back again like this, you will see when I actually walk through it, you will actually see what you have inside the name. Let's walk through it. So the first name starts at the beginning. It's good. Take a look. It says chocolate chip, correct? The second one says backslash n blueberry because it read the last new line. And that's why when it prints, it prints backslash n and a backslash n at the end. Therefore, what you see is two line printed. 
Okay? So we could say over here, skip the backslash n and run it again. And what do we have? Now the backslash n skipped. So you are saying read up to comma, skip the comma, read up to backslash n, read the backslash n. And the beauty is that if you are supposed to read few of them and one of them didn't work, all you need to do is to print a message that file is corrupted, and this is the last thing that I could read. And you give it to the client. Client has to go and fix their code, to fix their data file. It's not your responsibility. You are just reading the data file. So you don't have that interaction with you. Oh, that's wrong. Do it again, and so on and so forth. It's a beautiful thing. So <clears throat> instead of me telling you, keep entering this, keep entering that to test your program, I can simply give you a file and do F, scan F, so you're done with it. You don't have to keep entering information in your stuff. So play with this thing and write some files, open it, and remember, the most important thing is to open and close, okay? And uh, the flush thingy, so in here if I have this, let's see if the flush actually works. Okay, so in here I'm gonna say equal to do, and in here I'm gonna say F flush, oh, I don't have F flush. Copy and put it in utils.h. Last time that I've written this, it was a long time ago, so I really don't know if I'm doing it right or not, but we'll see. So now in here, I'm going to say f flush key, and I'm going to pass the file to it because it needs to know where, right? <clears throat> so I have to tell it this is the file to flush it from. So now <clears throat> it comes over here reads the first thing, and now it wants to flush the file. So let's go over here. It gets the file, C in is X, it is not equal to backslash N, it reads one, and that's A. It reads, uh, it keeps reading all the garbage until CH is new line. Oh, actually, I made a mistake. Because I have the flush, I should remove it from there, remove this from here. <laughs> <clears throat> because I already ate, <laughs> I have to remove the, um, do I need to remove it? Yeah, I'll remove it because I don't need to. But anyways, so <clears throat> let's stop it and run it again. So I'll put this one before so I can print it and see actually what the outcome is. So now you can take care of the garbage too if you want to. So. This prints what you have, and the flush key is going to get rid of all the garbage after until the new line is hit. So it's now Q, and it keeps going. How many did I put over there? Anyways, it's going to keep doing until it hits backslash N, and it comes out. Now it's backslash N. It goes back up, reads the next one, and prints the next one. So all the garbage now is not that you're going to receive a comma separated file like that. But what I'm saying is that you can write anything you want you did on a keyboard. It doesn't make any difference. The only difference is that you get it from a file. So for printf and scanf, it's identical. For get care is f get c. For put care is f put c, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, go find out. But uh, you can always use printf instead with percent %c, you don't have to. So just try it, read some files, write some files and see how it works out. And I know it's before the midterm, probably nobody's gonna do it, <laughs> but fine. I just wanted to kind of introduce it to you so the next time you're coming in, we can actually see how it works, all right? So files are as simple as that. There is nothing new to teach. You already know how to work with it because you are dealing with a dumb user behind the keyboard. And file is much easier than that. All right? Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? All right. And that's it. Those are files, ladies and gentlemen. And we are done. So 
those who did not do the one-to-one, -one, either book it for me till the end of the week or at the, when I'm marking your quizzes and your uh, midterm, I'm going to mark it without you being present. Okay? That's it. Uh, any questions? Shall I stop the thing, recording? Any question one? Any question two? All right.